Hello, everybody. Welcome to EM Chats. I'm Ken Briota, coming to you from the Event Marketer Studio. In just a minute, we'll begin our chat with Intel's Joe English on the Event Marketer of the Future. But first, we'd like to take 30 seconds to introduce you to our sponsor, Expand Media, with a short video. Expand is the world's largest manufacturer of rebrandable dimensional marketing platforms. A message can be changed out by anyone in market, whether it's a local or a national activation. Dozens of major household consumer products manufacturers and other Fortune 1000 brands use the Expand Podium case for local in-store events. As a matter of fact, many major spirit brands use the Expand Podium case as a portable bar. These activations sometimes require Expand to provide hundreds of indoor and outdoor dimensional marketing platforms at one time. Please go to www.expandmedia.com and ask to have a conversation with your local account executive. Thanks again to Expand Media. Now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our industry expert for today's chat. He's the creative director and experience designer at Intel Developer Forum, and he's going to outline the most important skills and characteristics of the event marketer of the future. Now, you folks are going to want to study up on this stuff because you're going to be doing it all sooner rather than later. Now, without any further ado, take it away, please, Joe English. Okay. So the first thing is that um, technology is going to scale events. And what that means is technology is the way that we scale the reach of events. Um, the, one of the professors um, from Stanford University uh, gave a great example of this recently. He offered his class online, and when he normally taught his class in artificial intelligence, he had 20 people go into the, sit through his class. When he offered it online, 160,000 people went to his class. So technology uh, increases the scale of what we can do in terms of sharing information, and that's wonderful. But the opposite side of that is that live events in the future are going to become smaller, most likely. Because as information technology allows us to reach more people, when we do decide to bring people together into a room, uh, into a conference center, for the cost that it does to do that, we will be more choosy about who we bring and what we ask of them. And the next thing is that information is, uh, we're, sh we're in the midst of a transition from information sharing to idea exchange. And that's what we're doing this morning. Let me tell you uh, what I mean by that. When we share information, what the typical type of uh, um, a presentation or something would be, I would spend an hour, I would give you lots of information, lots of details, um, and you would then um, be trained in doing something. When, when I'm just giving you an idea, what I'm doing is I'm exciting your mind. I'm giving you um, a little bit of information, but more importantly, an idea that then you're going to go off and do research and activate on your own. And the best example of this model is the TED model, where the talks are very short. The reason they're short is because the idea is to just give people an idea to go off and activate. So we're seeing this transition. Think about this today. I put those two couple of things I've already said together. Information is allowing us to or information technology is allowing us to scale. So I'm reaching all of you today, very low cost way. You didn't have to come together to to help uh, to to meet with me today. Um, but it also illustrates that if I had brought you together um, as this group, if I was only talking for 10 minutes, um, that would not be a very good um, use of your money to come all the way to Portland to talk to me for 10 minutes. So when, that is why we start to say that information technology is scaling and events may be smaller as they shift to, to things where we're getting people together to exchange ideas. The other big thing is, is about the audience. Audience is going to be the critical um, place to look for the future, the evolution of the future of events. And this is what I want you to all be thinking about. Our skills, when we get there in just a second, are all about figuring out who the audience is, because the audience of the future um, will, be much more, um, so will be much more selective about who we bring to events, what we know about them, and what we, can, what we will know that they can do, uh, or what, we, what they are doing either before, during, or after an event. Okay, so the five skills that we've boiled down. 
First of all, I frame this this way. Number one is mastering tools and trends in the analysis and acquisition of audiences. And what we mean here is that in the future, we will know so much more about people, whether they're consumers or business people, um, activists, whatever kinds of events you're putting on, you're going to know so much more about the people because of all the data that we gather about people now. And the way I like to, to illustrate this is to say that today, if you put on an event and you say that you're targeting consumers or IT professionals, 20 years from now, that might sound like you're just you're, you're saying, I'm putting on an event for humans or for people. What you'll be able to say in the future is, I don't just want 100 people at my event. I want 100 Joe Englishes or 100 Jack Smiths, people that have the same profile as that person that you're talking about, somebody that activates their social networks in a particular way or buys in a certain way or does something, has some skill. And so the, the people that are going to be um, on the best position in this industry are the people that will understand how to identify um, who, who are the best people to come to events and then hand select them to get them there. The second one is that we need to master audience behavior and measurement tools. I told you it was going to be a lot about the audience. Um, right now it's really hard to, to do three things. One, to figure out what your audience does before they come to an event what they do at your event, and what they do after. Um, because live events are very expensive, in the future we're going to need to be able to monitor that and measure that. So people that like terms like ROI will be really happy to hear that the, the future of the finance piece of events is going to be tied a lot to audience behavior. Right now we kind of get away with, with doing things. We will um, often have special promotions that we run, or, or maybe we'll do um, something where we invite someone to visit a website or to tweet something, but those are fairly soft metrics. What we would really like to do is see that Joe English was invited to our event when we, when we reached out to him, he accepted the invitation. Um, in between our event and getting that invitation, he went online, he did product research, he came to our event. and. And after, maybe even a year after, he bought our product. If we can show that, then you show that the investment in, in what happened at that event um, was worthwhile. And it could take all different forms. It could be we reached out to this person, they eventually voted for our candidate. Um, it could be any number of things. But what we're going to be able to do is be able to see what the audience does. And so understanding those tools is really important. A third thing is that we need to understand how to de design events that facilitate idea exchange. Okay. So as I mentioned in the introduction, we're moving from, from events that are essentially set up for information exchange, big ballrooms, lots of people sitting listening to PowerPoint presentations. We need to move to, to events that facilitate the interchange of people. So you've brought all these people together. We didn't use information technology because we, you know, which, which doesn't have interactive elements. We brought them together in this room. We need to take advantage of all of that human knowledge that's together. A great example of this at the TEDx conferences, when you, well, or at some of them, when you go in and have lunch on the first day, they give you a picnic basket and a blanket, and you're matched up with five people that you don't know, and you sit down and eat with them. This is a great example of facilitating idea exchange um, and networking within events so that people are meeting each other and you're taking advantage of that human skill. And the fourth thing is we need to learn how to make connections between members of your audience. So again, when I look at vast groups of people that are at events, I always say, you know, I always think of you know, the two most important people in the room walking past each other because they didn't know that they were there. We need to figure this out as professionals. How do we let other people know who's at the event, privacy concerns aside, how do we connect them to the most important people that they want to meet? Um, and how do we design different kinds of activities 
at the event to help people connect. So those are going to be critical. And the last of the five is you need to learn to scale your events through information technology and social media. So as events potentially become smaller, more selective about who they bring because you're investing all that money, the flip side of that is going to be that you're going to have to take advantage of the scale of those um, information technology elements to go spread your message to that wide audience. And the audience is there, and it can be huge when you tap into, as, as I said with Simon Thrun's class, instead of teaching 20 people, he taught 160,000 people through information technology. But as event professionals, we have to know how do we capture things that happen on site and at event? How do we spread that message out into the broader community? Um, how do we tap into social networks so that people that have come to your event then go off and spread the message to their broader networks? So those will be skills that will be really important to you. I'm afraid we're out of time for this EM chat, but please join us again on July 25th for our next one, which will feature John O'Gara, Group Manager of Event Technology at Microsoft, who's going to share his picks for the five best ways to tame the wireless network at your next event. Before we go, we'd like to give a final shout out to today's sponsor. Expand is the leading manufacturer of portable event displays, including banner stands, pop-ups, murals, and retractable stands for launches, experiential marketing events, and presentations. Uh, Expand's products are easy to set up in minutes without tools. They come with a lifetime warranty, and uh, it's really great stuff, so you got to check it out. Please visit www.expandmedia.com for more information. Our special thanks to our industry expert of the day, Joe English, and thank you all for chatting with us. We'll see you next time. Have a nice day.